Good morning. Hola. Buen dia. It is day number 22 from Lisbon to Santiago. We are leaving the village of Caldas de Reis and heading to the village of Padron, home of the famous Pimentos de Padron or the Padron peppers. And of course, the actual Padron stone, which we'll talk more about later because hopefully we're going to see that this afternoon. We have 18.6 kilometers to walk it's gonna be much better than yesterday it's nice and cool right now it's only 65 degrees Yay. and i know and uh, i think it's gonna get up to 80. Uh, we're starting about a half an hour earlier than yesterday so hopefully being a little bit shorter and a little bit cooler it won't be quite as sweltering as it was yesterday man it was hot and it was hot all across the region yeah. And it was only a one day heat wave, thank yeah. goodness. It's about to get cool. So today's not too bad of a day. We got a big climb at first, right? A little climb at the beginning and then mostly flat after that. They so, saved the worst day, the most challenging day for the last day. Because you you know, it's like it's like the mother nature knows you're excited to get to Santiago. So the whole terrain is like this, 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 this. Up, up, up. But that's okay. It'll be interesting because on the Camino Portuguese, we have no idea which way we're coming in. It's not the same as the Camino Francis. And we don't think it's the same um, as the way we left for Finisterra. So we're not totally sure what we're going to do. But that's pretty exciting. We're kind of coming into the city of Santiago from the southwest, I think. Yeah. So here's what the Camino looks like right now. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. So we are still on our way to Padron and walking through this incredible forest. And we were just saying how it looks and reminds us so much of Smoky Mountain National Park. So if you know us at all, you know we're from Dayton, Ohio, and our playground is about six hours away in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. We go down there. Okay. Pause, because just look at this. I mean, wow, okay. yeah, that's amazing. We go down there for spring break, um, sometimes Thanksgiving, Christmas. I mean, it just depends, but we get to, we try to get down there at least twice a year. And that's where we're trying to hike right now every trail in the Smoky Mountains because that's our training ground for every other adventure that we have. So we want to talk just for a second about training for the Camino because a lot of people have said, you know, how do you train? We've seen on the forums people asking about training and how does that work. And first of all, let's just say that as much training as you do, you can't train for the Camino. You can't train you can't. until you're wearing your backpack and walking 13 to 18 miles a day, every, every day, day for weeks on end. You just can't train for that. I mean, you can try to walk big miles. You can try to wear your pack. You, you could certainly be fit. I mean, you can go to the gym every day and work out for, you know, an hour or two, but we're out here walking for 
anywhere from five to nine hours in a day. And nobody has time for that. And I would recommend trying to do something. Doing something Absolutely. would be better than hitting the Camino having done nothing. I mean, we certainly, like, we don't have the day after day hiking legs, but after the first couple of days, our legs are like, oh, so this is a reminder, this is what we do uh, when we're out hiking. So that's how you train. You walk and you walk and train that has hills. As you can see, we're kind of going up and down right now. Um, you walk for the Camino specifically, you walk, um, try to walk on as much hard pavement, gravel pavement, rocky pavement, pavement as possible because your feet have to toughen up and look for a variety of terrain yeah um on the camino honestly the dirt trails that we're on today are not the majority of what we've been doing it's been a lot of pavement asphalt stones gravel um highway a little bit of everything yeah so we'll stop for a second so just look for a variety of conditions because you're going to be on a variety of conditions. Now, another thing I wanted to mention was people we see often on the forums and people often ask, what shoes do you walk in? You gotta There's walk- no right answer. You gotta walk in whatever's right for you. If you're trying something new on the Camino, you're gonna have problems. But if you usually wear hiking boots, then wear hiking boots on the Camino. If you usually wear trail runners or sandals, Whatever you use that you're comfortable in for your normal hiking is what you should wear for the Camino. The four pilgrims that are in front of us, we see two pairs of tennis shoes, a tall, a high hiking boot, a low hiking boot. I've worn hiking boots. Right now I'm wearing tennis shoes. Brian wears chacos. We've seen people in tevas, sandals. We see people in everything. The point is, what shoes could you walk in, like go to Disney World and walk around Disney World for like 12 miles a day for a week and see what shoes are the most comfortable for you. And then- That's you, an excuse to go to Disney World, Yeah, the there way. you go. And you definitely need to have a backup pair of shoes mm -hmm. to wear at night or on a day that your regular shoes just aren't gonna work. For us, we both carry very comfortable, very cushiony um, flip-flops that we use at night to give our feet a break. Mm -hmm. And on occasion, we've worn them during the day for short periods because of a blister or because of some other issue that we've needed to just change out the shoes. And there are plenty of stores that sell shoes in the villages, but you don't know what they are. So the whole, the, you can replace a lot of things, but knowing your footwear and don't, say, well, I have to wear hiking shoes because that's what everybody else is wearing. Don't, Brian never has. And so if you have feet that just hate tennis shoes or hiking shoes and you love and you walk in your sandals all day, wear them, wear them, be comfortable. Yeah, definitely have to work what's gonna work for you. You know, people ask all kinds of questions about gear and every hiker, every pilgrim has gear opinions. And you know, as the saying goes, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one and they all stink. So You have to you carry what's right for you. Uh, we did a gear list. If you go to cruisewithacolmas.com, we did one before we left. Once we're blogging again, we'll talk about our gear. We're going to update am... that gear list because there are a few things we have with us, even though we pared down a few things that haven't been used. Small. I am so happy overall with what we brought though. Yeah, we were better at packing this time, but we still could have minimized even more yeah. on a few items. Yeah. So we'll update that too in a few weeks or so when we get back to regular blogging in September. For now. All right, hasta luego. Ciao. pilgrims walking to Santiago on the Camino Portuguese, Padron is their last night's stop before reaching Santiago. Legend has it that St. James preached here uh, when he first entered the Iberian Peninsula, and after his death, his body was returned to Padron. 
The Iglesia de Santiago, or Church of St. James and Padron, is known for its iconography and for the fact that it houses the big stone, or Padron, that St. James's boat was moored to when his body was returned for burial. Here's the stone, and most pilgrims are allowed to walk right up to it to take pictures and video and to pay tribute. Throughout the church, there are other icons of not only the apostles, but St. James himself, including this statue showing St. James the Moor Slayer. Hello. A most enthusiastic welcome. This room cost us 39 euro, so way under budget. And hopefully there's a cool breeze coming in here because there's no air conditioning and it's very hot. Um, apparently we have a nice big closet, which we have found is good for hanging laundry to dry. You just put a towel down bottom and that's really good. Um, the bathroom's small. The shower. Step in the shower, honey. Come join me in the shower. Hold on, I gotta move my hips. Oh my God. My hips aren't as big as it looks. So this is the shower. My RV shower is bigger than this. So this is gonna be fun. Fortunately, I'm only gonna spend about 10 minutes in there. But the view is nice. The view is nice and um, the Dad. bed is well. And a beautiful view. Hard. Oh, bed is hard. <laughs> Good morning, hola. Hola, buenos dias. It is day 23 on the Camino Portuguese. Our last day of walking on the Camino Portuguese as we head today into Santiago. We have 24 kilometers approximately to walk today. So it's kind of a long day and it's almost entirely uphill, he says, as he starts to walk down a hill. This is the only downhill we have. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too bad, it's a gradual uphill. Which is very interesting because uh, if you followed us along, you know on the Camino Francis, we've walked the Camino, we've walked all of the Camino Francis two years ago, and then part of it this year, and it's not a lot of, it's not the same because there's a, lot, a big downhill at the end getting into Santiago. So this is going to be really interesting. We're both very curious as to where we're going to be coming in. Um, it's the fog is lifting right now, so it's misty on our face as we talk. Except while we're under this bridge. Uh, it's misting under our, on our faces as the fog lifts. Um, 60 degrees right now. The high today is 80. So hopefully it'll be nice um, the rest of the day because it's going to be a really long day. Yes, it is. Tell us why, Brian. So it's uh, 730 right now when we started walking and we are just a couple hundred meters away from the hotel right now. But we are walking into Santiago today on July 24th. Tomorrow, July 25th, is St. James Day, or the Feast of St. James, which is kind of like a national holiday here in Galicia, because uh, he's the patron saint of not only the town of Santiago, but also all of Galicia. So basically, we are walking into Washington, D.C. on July 3rd. <laughs> we will be missing uh, the parades today. They'll start at noon. Noon, there's a huge parade today. Literally huge, it's the Parade of the Gigantes which are those giant head uh, characters. Yeah. But tonight at midnight, the feast kicks off with um, the Fire of St. James is what they call it, which is a big festival and um, fireworks, laser lights, all sorts of things. And we are planning to be there because it is awesome. So we're getting a nap <laughs> before. Nope. We're getting a nap before in hopes to um, be able to stay up that late. It's going to be really crowded. Like we have to be in the plaza by about nine, probably nine at the latest. At the latest. Last few, last time we were here two years ago, they closed the plaza at nine and wouldn't allow people in anymore because it was already so full. So it's going to be a long day. We'll have some video along the way, but That's here's an exciting day. the Camino right now.
We made it. We made it. Mwah. No, That's let's not the building behind. Get a drink. <laughs> let's take our packs off, please. I'm thirsty. Please take our packs I'm off. I'm tired. I'm so tired. I'm hot. And who's gonna keep us up till midnight tonight? Me. But uh yeah. But we get a we get a nap first. We get a nap and a drink. And a drink. Or we two. That. I need water right now. <laughs> None of me water. <laughs> it was 25 kilometers straight uphill. Uphill literally. the whole time, just whole time. about. I mean, it was in a. There were steep points, but it was 25 kilometers uphill. Oh, the way. It was a lot of uphill. Oh, the way. I need a drink. I need a selfie. <laughs> Hashtag Pilgrim Day drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Buen camino, we did it. Adios. As you can see, we toughed it out and we made it all the way to the beginning of the Festival of St. James. So tune in next week to see more of our time in Santiago and the Feast of St. James.